Hello there. Welcome to the World Cafe podcast. This podcast has been designed with created content that centers on the power of words. Can we really do anything without speaking? Can we really do anything without the agency of words? Yes, that is what this podcast is all about. And I am your host, Amakri Isoe, your neighborhood word trader. I believe in the power of words, for it is the unit of creation. I trade in words to profit my world. And we are live. Hello there. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good everything. <laughs> yes, you know how we do it on the show. This is the <laughs> World Cafe Live Show. That space where we come in to lean on one another's experience to forge a positive path. We're here again. How are you? I'm good where I am. It's been sunny in Abuja, the federal capital territory of Nigeria. I tell you, even... Even the waters are complaining now. They are not cold as they used to be. <laughs> so what are we doing today? Yes, I have amazing people on the show today. We are celebrating our women. Yes, our mothers, our sisters. Yes, you have one in your house. Somehow you do. A grandmother, yes. A mother, yes. An auntie, yes. A cousin, yes. A sister. International Women's Day 2024. Inspiring inclusion and i have three wonderful amazing women with me in the studio today am i not blessed it is written <laughs> blessed are you amongst women <laughs> enough of my band you can see their faces and i'm going to allow them to introduce themselves yes and i'm going i'm not going to introduce them they will introduce themselves then we'll take it up from there we're going to go anti-clockwise yes as you see the name talks land relaxes and eforma or money but we're going to start by you know, taking it from Tokes. Tokes, you're welcome. How are you? I'm good as always, and you know that boy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So let's let, let's get to meet you, then we move on from there. Who is Tokes right. and why is she here today? Okay, then. So hello, 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 everybody. My name is Tokumbo Ifacharoti, but yeah, you just call me Tokes for short. Um I'm here today because first of all, I want to celebrate myself. So, International Women's Day, I need to look inwards. And to do that, just a snippet about me. Um, To really dig deep into what International Women's Day means for me, I'll talk about my NGO. So I run uh, an NGO called the Children, Youth and Women Empowerment Initiative, and it's based in Nigeria. And one of the key focal points, since we're talking about women, is really gathering women together and understanding exactly what makes them tick. Who are they? Mm -hmm. Are they mothers, sisters, aunties? And what role do they play, not only in their homes, but in the society as a whole? Mm -hmm. And I know we talk about it under the realms of international, but then if we look inside the regional, the community, there's the national before we even hit international. Mm. And so for my space, I want to take you on a journey, just a quick one um, about, you know, the women that I have come into contact with in Nigeria. And it takes me back to when we had the insurgents, the Boko Haram insurgents in in Nigeria. And women were scattered all across Nigeria. And I was opportune to visit the six geopolitical zones in Nigeria and visit these women in, in various camps, in their homes, and find out how they managed against all odds to be resilient in still holding their homes together. Many fully aware that some of them, their husbands died or their husbands were in hospital or their husbands were just nowhere to be found or some of them, their brothers were missing. You know, so what stood out for me was the fortitude to keep on providing food to their families, to find ways to send their kids to school in the Mm -hmm. midst of all and at the same time keep on smiling and so in various camps we taught them how to make jewelry we taught them how to make food and they sold these food and jewelry to people in their communities just to enable themselves to sustain themselves so i won't go into i know you're going to ask more questions but that's in a nutshell i'm um a forward-thinking wife mother 
um, charity worker, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I've been June to give talks at the United United Nations. I've been opportunity to give talks in the rural, the most rural community you can ever think of with glee, with gladness and happiness. Yeah. And so I'm glad to be on your podcast and I really look forward to hearing what the other ladies have to say and then giving you some more snippets into what Amazing. it means to be. Good to have you here, Tooks. Good to have you here. Lovely. I mean, listening to what you do, I mean, it's amazing and inspiring at the same time. Welcome to Thank the World you. Cafe uh, live show. Yes, now we go over to Lauren Lassisi. She, before she came on, she said something that was, I mean, really striking to me. Yes, I, I've heard about her, but I didn't know of this part of her, but I'll allow her to say it. But I, I'm glad she's here to share, you know, with us, you know, in this season. Larry, you're welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're watching us from. And thank you for having me on your podcast. Um, when I saw you give the invit invitation, I thought, no, this is opportunity for me to talk to people about yeah. breast cancer. Um, mm. I'm a breast cancer survivor. I'm a mm -hmm. mother, a single mm -hmm. parent, and, a doctor, mm -hmm. and I'm a mom to three grown-up daughters. Amazing. And um, it's been it's been a journey, and I'm still on the journey. Um, I am working with NHS, and that's the mm. reason why I actually went into NHS because I wanted to I want to give back because oh. they really did a lot for me. Um, I said NHS because I'm based in UK, okay. uh, London. So mm. yes, I that is a very big opportunity for somebody like myself i don't know if i'll still be here if i was in nigeria i don't know because the grade that it was i was from grade three going to grade four which mm. is the last stage of having cancer and i'll go more into that when you ask questions but yeah. I worked with end of life patients in Watford General here, and now mm -hmm. I work as a business performance manager Amazing. for another trust. So okay. it's been a journey, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm still living it. And mm -hmm. I can tell you, being resilient, it comes with prayer. Mm -hmm. So my being really resilient comes with support. Yeah, in terms of family, friend. In yeah. terms of just that general support, yeah. it's needed. Um, yeah. I won't be here without that support network that I had. Mm. And mm. I'm still on the journey. And I'll tell you the reason why later. So I'll let Amazing. the other lady speak Amazing. if Amazing. that is okay. But yeah, I'm a breast cancer survivor and I am proud and thank God that I am alive to be able to Amen. give that testimony and be part Amen. of this as a mom, a sister, an aunt Amen. in this day Amen. to celebrate women because Amen. I think we take things for granted that you can just yeah. get up and go. So Amazing. I'll stop there. Yeah. I, 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 I feel you when you got to that part of resilience and prayer. You, you know, uh, before we came on, I was telling uh, the former and uh, Coach Deaver, uh, took Deaver uh, about my song. I, I wrote couple of songs which i'm going to release here in the month of march two dedicating it to women one is about my mother's prayer you know i i i i mean growing up as a child being a father now and all of that i tell you that i hear my mother's prayer every day of my life every day practically so i understand when a woman bellows that you know that's should i say breath or sigh of relief as it were about prayer I understand it perfectly well. And we're going to get back to you on that. Yes, the next person we have here is my dear sister, Ifoma Omoni. Sorry, guys. When I call her my dear sister, this is why I call her my dear sister. We've been to, we've been in touch since uh, our year one or pre in school, back in school. So we school yeah. together. I've known Ifoma for more than 20 years now, if I'm not mistaken, if my math is still correct. You know, so... Yes, so, it's since 1999 2000 thank you. thank you so so i call her my sister obviously you know why now i call her my sister you know so go ahead if let's meet you okay good evening everybody 
morning or afternoon, wherever you are joining us from. I want to say thank you, Amakri, for always inviting me to your show, especially to celebrate women. Um, I'm a very proud woman. I don't think even if I had another option, I would choose anything more than being a woman. So really? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people say when I come in another world, I would rather know my story is not that one. Amazing. Despite despite the odds and all that women go through i am proud to be a woman i don't want to mm. be any other person mm. <laughs> so my name is ifoma neka omoni also known as ifeno i am a proud homemaker a wife a mother but before all that i want to start by saying I am the daughter of the Most High God. That Amazing. is where my essence <laughs> flows from. That Beautiful. is where my identity is hinged on. Before yeah. you start talking about what I do, so I am the daughter of the Most High God. And presently, I function in the role as a wife, as a mother, as a homemaker, as a podcast host, as a book writer. Mm. And I don't know what else is on the way. So mm. that's the friend. Um, presently, Amazing. I I host the podcast for women, wives, particularly homemakers. Mm. Why? Why am I passionate about homemakers? I actually used to think I would end up being a doctor, but my plans didn't go as I thought. And I thank God for taking me through the, the part where it landed me to be a homemaker. And mm. I don't have regrets. It's the best job I can ever have. And I Good say time. it confidently. And I want to encourage all women. That's why that podcast was inspired. At home mm. with Ifeno is a podcast to encourage women, whatever sphere or season of life you are, particularly mm. women that are at home that think they are not bringing value. That podcast is to encourage you, first of all, to know that you are valuable. That podcast mm. is to tell women that your identity is from your creator, God Almighty. You have his yeah. DNA in you, and the season of being a mother or a wife is not irrelevant to who you are. So mm. I, would, I would like to stop there. But one thing that At Home with Ifeno does is first of all, to know that your identity is not in your role, is not in your job mm-hmm. title, is not in your mm-hmm. certificates, it is in mm-hmm. God. So if you find mm-hmm. yourself at home, Beautiful. make sure you are giving value there. Make sure you also know who you are. Even if your mm-hmm. spouse doesn't accept or appreciate you, appreciate yourself women are wonderful to be around thank you amazing see your identity is in god i love that i I love that like your role doesn't define you your job Mm -hmm. title doesn't define you i mean even the big fat uh, fat, uh, account or whatever does not define you who and what defines you is god and the Mm -hmm. minute you are you are you are accepted as it were in the beloved that is all it solves. Now I'm going. I'm going to come to Landry. You have a unique story. Unique story. A breast cancer survivor. I, I want you to tell us what. I mean, what has it been like? How did you go? Th- yes, obviously, God. I mean, helped you all the way. But there's a level of discipline or resilience you have shown. I mean, to be. I don't like using the word survival per se, but for the want of word, I've been. Mean, a survival and you're standing here and encouraging people what was yeah. it like it's been it's been a very long journey and mm-hmm. also i'm just going to say this out there that lady that you're sitting that that's sitting there talks <laughs> we've known each other from secondary school wow i thought i thought i knew somebody <laughs> from way back you know from ancient of days <laughs> and, um, she, she's godmother to my my daughter. Whoa! Wow! Beautiful. She, I'm godmother to our son. Ah, We've known each other wow. ages. Mm. Um, even though she wasn't here immediately, the children and the husband were mm. with me in the hospital. They came to visit, wow. 
And as soon as she got here and I could see in their faces, they were like, it's fine. I'm okay. Mm. So yeah, but going back to that, yes, I've tried. Also, I'm going to be, I did do Totally Liberated. That's how I came up with the name for the podcast. Oh, I'm not yeah. yet launched it, but yes, okay. it's something that I've got in the back corner. And I'm mm-hmm. hoping to do to write a book as well. So Amazing. I'm putting it out there because I will. And um, people have invited me to come and do these talks to encourage mm. people. In terms mm. of the journey, even when talks and some of our schoolmates came to visit me, they she can she can tell you the whole thing. It's different to mm. I'm different to what it was then. But throughout mm. it, that support network, wow. that encouragement. Wow. Please, if anybody's out there. Mm. Keep giving them a call. Mm. Don't stop calling them. Mm. They just need positive words. They just need to mm. hear positive things. Like, yeah. you'll be fine. We're here for you. Whatever you need, just let me know. Mm. That mm. phone call. Yeah. Helps me sing. Mm. That people coming in to visit me kept yeah. me sane. Kept my daughters sane. My daughter, the last one, she's twenty. She's twenty-three now. She's going to be twenty-four next month. She became my carer mm. until I finished the um, and I finished. Funny enough, I finished my treatment on my birthday as well. So Whoa. for everything, there Whoa. is a purpose and there is a reason. There was yeah. pains. I went through a lot of pain. I'm still going through a lot of pain right now. So I did mm. go through chemotherapy. I went through radiotherapy. So mm. in terms of the journey, I had to take one day at a time. I like that. But it, I had to say to myself, I am going to overcome this. This is mm. not going to take me down. Mm. I am going to overcome it. And I started giving myself positive affirmations. Yeah. And mm. I needed that for me, not just for me alone, but for my girls, because mm. I've got all daughters. Okay. So you can mm. imagine, and nobody in the family has ever had cancer. So, and I didn't even tell my mom either. I didn't mm. tell her until I finished the treatment. I just didn't want that added stress as well. Yeah. But in terms of how it took one day at a time because there was a time I could not physically get off. Mm. So I only mm. went back to work fully to, to almost two years now. Okay. I've, I've, I've not been able to go back to work. I could not yeah. drive. I was on crushes. Mm. My head was completely bald. I could not put people who put scarf. I don't put mm. scarf on because my scalp was quite tender. I'm mm. still very tender everywhere. As a result mm. of that, and I'm not telling that everybody has their own journey. Yeah, I survived it, but I had to listen to everything that I was told to do. Yes, mm. I was having prayers. I had prayers from church. My church members, they bring food. They cut my gardens. They do whatever they need to do just to keep me sane. Mm. But I needed to follow strictly what they were telling me in the hospital as well. I changed what I, the way I was eating, the way I was cooking my food. I resulted in using a product. Got, well, it's a cookie, cookware. It's called Salad Master. So mm. that's what I started using. The reason mm. being, it retains all your nutrients in. Okay. So, and I, I think, uh, featured that on Toxie's mm. um, webinar one time as well, yeah. teaching yeah. them how to cook because then I eliminated oils in my food. It helps you eliminate oil, fats. It just keeps the nutrients in. Mm. So I'm. Um, even though I'm having the medication, I needed to have good food in me as well. Mm. So it's very, so I was doing the physical, I was doing the spiritual, but I was doing everything together. Together. And okay. I can't afford to fall fall apart in front of my daughters. I couldn't. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah. I have my, don't get me wrong, I have my days I just sit in bed and yeah. I'm asking God. Why me? So, because before that, I'd gone through other things and that was the crowning of it. Um, mm. I became a single parent, like I said, because mm -hmm. things happen between yeah. couples. Yeah. And then after the home went, then the cancer came in. So you can imagine all those things happening at the same time. That's why mm. when you said resilience, mm. I never thought, thought about myself that way before. But mm. going into breast cancer and surviving it, I mm. saw that for women or for men, because people go through prostate cancer as well. So yeah. I talk about these two people now. I talk about menopause. I talk about andropause. I talk mm. about breast cancer, the kind of things you should eat, don't eat. Mm -hmm. But that worked for me. It doesn't mean mm. because it worked for me, it can't work for everybody because everybody has different diagnosis. True. So mm. for me, I had to hold on to strength I had to mm. say to myself every day, you are going to overcome this. This I'm is not going to be to you. I keep saying it and I keep affirming it. But people like Tobes, people like my daughter, people like my God, so all of them were there as a support network. Amazing. They didn't come in and go, ha, ah, no. That is Beautiful. not, some people did, but you need more of the positive big things going on and that's um, why i said i'm just going to say to people anybody going through that once they've gone through the treatment it's not finished mm. it has a, you've only just started mm. healing, and i'm still healing now i've developed mm. fibromyalgia i've developed rheumatoid arthritis and i've got different things nerve pains happening to me but i have to keep going yeah yeah so look look to god focus on god but Amen. do the right things eat right Amen. pray right and everything Amen. will come together I, I hope i've not taken your time to no that's why, we're here. that's why we're here that's why we're here you know wh when you were talking i was listening what kept uh ringing was network network yes network yes network yes. the kind of people you have around you the kind of sayings the kind of words you know yeah. the, the confessions and everything and that's what this show is all about words how do yeah. you treat how do you view your world through your yeah. speaking and blessed to have people like this around you. you you know out there there's been this should i say narrative and uh conversation that women don't support themselves but that's not what i'm seeing here you know what you have said here was like most of the people around you this season you know has been women you know all around yes. supporting you and all that so indeed we can be inspired by our should i say fellow women you know not to say oh where you have women you have trouble that's not true from what you're saying now now i'm going to i'm going to call we'll come back to you but let me take it with talks because now it's like she has brought you on the spotlight now you know you've been there you've been there you've been there you've been there and so tell us what does it feel like for women to support one another what does it, what does it feel like it it feels really good because even listening to larry's narrative and some things that she said now that she never even shared with me but mm. it's things that she saw that kept her going and I think when you hear narratives like that and stories from the heart like that it just goes to show that women supporting women is just the best thing ever and also what tends to happen is when you are in the group of a right set of women with the right mindset you, you would know and so women have that extra intuition to know when they're in the right group and to know when they're with other women who they're just showing off maybe their wealth or what mm. they've achieved or their mm. husbands or their children, mm. you know? So there are different cadres when you talk about women and it's finding that right balance. And and so, I mean, I, I don't know if it's a biblical saying or if it's a saying that's out there, or if it's a saying that's out there, you know, women have that intuition to know 
even sometimes months before mm. when they're in a group to say this person might be a good friend that person might be an amebo oh no for for <laughs> that person yeah. might be do you know what i mean there's that I there's do. something like that there so if i want to come down again and narrow it down to um larry and then you know other women too who have gone Please through do. similar yeah um similar stories that larry has shared you know not necessarily cancer it, it, it you know there are ailments to which he is aware of that other people too that we know about have gone through what keeps them going as she said is being there and sometimes it, it's not necessarily being physically there because as she said when it happened that wasn't even in the country it was my family that went to visit her first and then when they came I went it's knowing about this and praying whilst you're there and providing that support either text whatsapp through a friend just knowing sometimes even just sending a gift you know mm-hmm having something that shows people that you care and shows people that they want you alive you 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 have to stay alive i mean like where are you going you have to stay alive there's a reason for you to live you know so there's that element yeah. i remember even then sometimes we just call she she lives far away from where i am and we just you know have a meet just call and hey there's a party somewhere are you coming in her state and everything cuz the whole idea is take her away from where she is you know mm-hmm. come on, let's have fun let's have you know because she loves dancing she loves singing so it's just being there and trying to make sure that you you understand the assignment that's what they say understand the assignment you yeah. know so they understood her assignment and not just Larry too there, there are other people out there too who you need to understand their own trajectory so the mm-hmm. way I liaise with Larry will be probably totally different from the way I really, you know liaise with Kate you know what i mean or yeah. with me or, or kemi because they have different things different things going on in their lives or in kechi or, or zainab or you know or kaka there will be different ways that I relate to but i think the key thing is them knowing that you are genuine you, 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 this is who you are you know you gen- yeah. you just you, show and and i think once we we get to that space then everything is honky dory i think the women that you find when you hear all these stories that you can't trust the woman or woman ah they have wahala and all that is because a they're not supposed to be in your clique that, that's mm. how it is they're not meant to be there they're not bad they have their own group that they entertain themselves and they're happy but you just need to know your place and yeah. work with it and make sure that you know that love you know is a circle of life it keeps on going round and round and round and truth be told and i'm sure you'd be able to attest to this to you know if and um, and also you larry the moment you show love to somebody god sends other people to show love to you very true it's just natural very true very just, true yeah so, so what you give out comes back yeah. amazing you know what what comes around goes around more or less and from from what you just said now find find your space mm. find your circle find find you the way I'll put it operate from the place of you you in the sense that okay this is my you know i click or rather i i, I resonate with this set of people and uh, i mustn't be everywhere that there's a place god has for me for me to find it now before we came on the show i was discussing with you from we were just talking you know the issue of uh, identity inclusion and how a lot of us Mm-hmm. us now i mean women finding this thing of uh what i call it equality and it's like a problem mm-hmm. you know it's like mm-hmm. a problem and the, the way she explained it got to me and i want her to take it again you know like i i, I mean finding yourself on the table are you sure that's where you belong is it where yeah. you belong or finding yourself in god and expressing mm-hmm your very essence if I'm a, I, I don't know if I got it correctly because I know we we're talking about that before <laughs> we came on the show I want you to circle around okay. that again mm. okay so um, there are different ways one could look at a particular word and even this inspire inclusion just like talks and Larry have talked about you know supporting one another as women so another way we could look at this inspiring inclusion 
the first question is who is not included you know as in mm-hmm. is is there a group of people that have been excluded so yes. if we look at if you look at um the verse amapri gave us a verse you know to look at to to like narrow or to drive the conversation and i would just if you permit me i would like to read it and then start from there so it mm-hmm. says god created men and women to be like himself that's men and women were created to be like god and he gave them them is referring to both the men and the women he gave them his blessing and he called them human beings another mm. version says god made male and female people and he called them human and he blessed mm. them so from that verse i know we we've, we've already started by saying our identity should flow from who created us where we are coming from we are not um, what the scientists say about evolution that's that's not the conversation for today <laughs> but <laughs> but if if you know that the one who created every one of us made male and female interestingly if women to even if women should study the way they were created they should not mm-hmm. feel excluded they should not mm. feel that they are not there they should not feel it's a men's world no mm. that's a lie it's a lie that was told even to that first woman mm. she was told something that was that that she was already in you know mm. so a lot of us women have excluded ourselves so when i looked yes. at the, the the theme for this year saying inspire inclusion the first thing that came to my mind is why are we feeling excluded mm. why are we feeling you know why are we not seeing our relevance and value no matter mm. what culture we say no matter what people are saying why 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 will me a stay at home mom for the season i have decided like lara said everybody have their own journey so why do yeah. why do you feel you are excluded why do you mm. feel that nobody values you why do you mm. feel that what you are doing is mundane who said mm. so mm. Mm. Well, and mm. and larry also said something she said the 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 things that sh- you should surround yourself with is positivity so the question is what are you thinking do you yeah. know your worth as a woman Mm, if yes. you know your worth as a woman then you will know that you have been included from the foundation from the beginning because god made male and female he didn't make only the, the male and say mm. they are superior Mm-mm. and he didn't yes. say the female part and if you look at it male and female make human kind male yes. and female so so it means if you exclude some people you are not complete and this is not just about marriage it's even in the workplace it's everywhere Mm. women are part of the equation we are included that is what Mm. the one that created you said so the Mm. question is whose reports do you want to believe amazing amazing (laughs) whose report do you want to believe you know before we came on the show i was asking myself have you ever seen any strong man that was not brought up by a woman Mm. name one <laughs> I'm not thinking about the grown up adult now I'm thinking about <laughs> a child every man is formed by a woman by a woman definitely yes your character you know my, my son will always call his mother his girlfriend <laughs> and I don't know where yes he's, he, he will be 14 by September so now he calls mm-hmm. the daddy Daddy, where's my girlfriend? I just looked at you with your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> it's my wife. Well. You know? yeah, but now, I see a lot of that, you know, being molded, as in his mom, mm. all of them, even more. Because most mm. of the things I am today, I owe to my mother. It's not mm. as if I'm not degraded mm. or looking down on the male folks now, but I'm only, it's only the truth. Show me a man. Let's leave the women alone now. Show me a man, a strong man who who respects women, who deals right, that was not brought up by a woman. Mm. Wow. Show me one. <laughs> because that's the truth. And so that's the lie the the, the, the world 
or the devil or you know the society tries to paint to you and you know try to create this inferiority and superiority complex and all of that and you see women trying to see themselves as less of a human yeah. compared to the male folks that's not true mm-hmm. and i try to do that you know all my life i think i've worked with women the most mm. all my life from school you know being a class rep being a class captain being my class you have like to were like 100 of us out of the 100 we had like 78 or or 80 ladies so do the maths so you know, <laughs> the whole class exactly so somehow i have worked with women and somehow i can recognize the strength of women mm. i know yes i recognize it I, I mean and i each time i see it i don't downplay it mm. i accentuate it i you know, like I, I i i more or less i hail you the way we say it in nigeria i, I acknowledge <laughs> it and i say it because the truth is the world is not balanced without women you know talks you are saying something about if it's if it's biblical now let me tell you from study of scriptures the word holy spirit Mm. the Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. the paraclete, Mm. is the same thing if you're looking at when women or a woman was formed. It's the same thing God created. And Mm -hmm. that's why women have that instinct. If a woman tells you something, believe her. (laughs) Mm. And and not, let me give a little jab now. If you see any (laughs) spiritual atmosphere, the first people to respond are women. Mm. No, but that's true. It's true. Any spiritual atmosphere, check it. Any church, the uh, NSP, NS, 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 NSPPD, <laughs> in the highest number yes, of people there are women, you know. They are, they are not, yeah, so they respond, they understand the things of the spirit, you know, yeah. not as if the male folks don't, but that is the nature. Yeah. So why should I downplay such a thing? And the only way you can, you can destroy something that is strong is to make that thing look down on itself lie to that thing all of a sudden you lose your potency and your power and that is what for me you know celebrating women this season is all about know who you are Mm. you are in the image of divinity Mm. you are in the image of divinity you have equal substance like the male yeah yeah who are, if somebody should ask you, where are you from? I'm from God. <laughs> yes. So that's the essence of my celebrating women this season. You know, and when I say strong yeah. women, not as if if I see the weak ones, I don't celebrate them, but the strong ones, I encourage them to also pick up the weak ones, encourage them, yeah. you know. Mm. You know, like the story of Larry, for example. Yeah. You're going through stuff. Listen to her. She's she's been through what you're complaining about, but see what see what she's become. So yeah. follow that yeah. path, and you begin to see things evolve. Women are amazing; they are amazing. So, Larry, back to you guys. Don't worry. Today, I, I will spend a little time with two people. I want I want you guys to encourage the female, the women. I mean, the women and female folks out there. Now, seeing what you have gone through, where you mm. are now. Uh, from what you said, you're a business uh, analyst. Am I correct? The last thing you no, said. No, I'm a business performance manager. Okay, business performance manager. So, in your circle, how, how do you leverage on your experience to like work with your team members? How do you do that? Um, that's a good question. Actually, today because I've got a new boss that just so I had a boss that my ward manager. So he's mm. moved on to the another world. So I've got a new boss. Now she is a woman. The one that left was a man. Amen. And this is a woman. So, and I manage a team of four. Mm-hmm. And I'm having to get to know them because I've gone through that process where I've got a boss that when they speak to you, you feel not the boss that when this was from my other trust. Mm. They make you feel like you're this small. So I've been mm. at the other end of the spectrum. Also, I've seen how volunteers have spoken to me. So mm. when I do my one-to-one with my team, because I do supervision and all that, and yeah. you know things like that, 
I need to, I get to a stage where they can talk to me freely. I don't want them to feel somebody's looking at, at them because you are in that lower grade. So, Amazing. you know, the condescending way that people talk to you. I'm not, yeah. I am friendly with them, but mm -hmm. I still make sure I still keep that boundary, which mm -hmm. is when we need to get to the, what we need to do, we still talk about it for firm, but still giving them that that feeling that mm. somebody cares yeah. so that's the way i've been and i got there and i just thought to myself nobody celebrates their birthdays here mm. so what did i do it was my my boss's birthday my ward manager i got a card and i started going around for them to sign and sign. they were all like oh we don't usually do this but mm. before I did it, my daughters are my consultants. So mm. <laughs> I said, guess what? I want to do this. What do you think? So that's my oldest. She said, mom, go for it. I think it's a good idea. I said, I think it will bring the team together. Yeah. And since I've started it, I started the job, um, this new one, November. Yeah. And everybody signed. And you could see the difference. Amazing. Mm. I uh, since then we now sign cards for each person. They were not doing that before I got there. Beautiful. I just wrote, yeah, it's such an intense environment that we're working in. Mm. It's good to be celebrated. Beautiful. So I hope I've answered your question, but yes, you have. That is have. what that's what I brought into that environment. And I still mm. tend to bring more. I still Amazing. tend to keep you know, yeah. speaking, because even my uh, the new boss that came now, I mean, there are things for her to learn. We just sat mm -hmm. down together, have a chat. And she knows now I work two days from home because of my health, mm -hmm. because I need to break the driving to work and back. So they, that flexibility is there for me as well. So it's been, it's been really, I just mm. know I need to include people so the word Sweet. inclusion, I need to inspire them also mm -hmm. to feel that they can talk. So the team meetings I've been to, I've been able to explore things. They were able to speak candidly to me. Yeah. I've got one of them saying, thank you. You're my, <laughs> you're my manager. I don't want to go to the other one. Mm. But the idea is because I've been to, at the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. I know what it feels like when you don't feel included in things mm. and just to um uh support what ifoma was saying or to answer your question uh when you were saying where did this start from it starts from where i'm sorry where you feel men <coughs> feel mm. they're the head and that's what they've been told therefore the head is meant to just sit down and order do this, do that, do that. And if that mm. is what you've been taught and you've not been taught how to bring the family together, together. that's what you know. That's yeah. what you are going to... It's whatever you feed, you know, whatever you have, that's what mm. you're going to bring out. So like you said, you've grown around women, you've seen the emotions, you've seen the support network, you've seen how things are done. Therefore, mm. you have more respect and more inclusion and more inspiration around them. But yeah. if you've grown mm. up in a male domineering environment where it's all like, we are talking, you shut up. Where men are talking, women don't talk. <laughs> What do you expect? It's yeah. all about training, though. It's all yeah. about and it's all about educating ourselves, unpacking True. a lot of ideas that we've gained wherever we've gained it, and True. then change change the scenario yeah. and make things more. Because I remember when I when my daughters were growing up, mommy is talking, keep quiet. I've been there. And 
with time, I had to start speaking to other people in this country that brought up their children because I could see the distance, I could see the infringement, I could mm. see the unhappiness that was happening. So I said, mm. you know what, I need to speak to people and I'm in Christ. I need to know what God wants me to do with my girls. So yeah. I had to start unpacking a lot of these mommy is talking, daddy is talking, shut up, don't do this. It doesn't help the situation. Amazing. And me and talks, we bounce back. We did you hear, you know we talk about what do we, we, partner, more or less. we encourage each other. What can we do? Again, you need the right network around it. If you've got toxic environment, you get toxic outcome. Yeah. That's that's what I can say. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, listening to you, what I can hear you as in uh leveraging on your experience you had it you had so many people around you they came around provided support their energies you know you you received from their goodwill so it's like yeah. okay now now i am at this point how do i also give you know from what i have received you know so and you, yeah. you started like what you did now uh, acknowledging people's birthday celebrating them yeah. you know they they are no they are no longer invisible so to say they 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 they, they, are, they are seen they, they are yeah. appreciated actually, and they love... sorry to stop you i no, actually now went even though in my bed i started i educated myself i went into courses like grief trauma coaching and i do that now counseling okay. i do okay. all that i bet okay. i had to learn it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I had no choice because I needed something to keep my brain going. And I could see the difference. Lying in bed, I could not get up like I would normally get up. I could not speak. I could not eat the way I usually do. And Mm. God, God is not a God of disorder. But Mm -hmm. there was a purpose. Yeah. And there's this taboo about don't speak about that. You got breast cancer, or you don't want people to hear about that. That's the reason why a lot of people are also dying. Mm. Don't talk about prostate cancer. Don't talk about these. Don't talk about these. Or I'm a single parent. Don't talk about you. Be you should be ashamed. No, I'm not ashamed. Amazing. I'm proud. Amazing. And that's what has made me who I am today. And Amazing. I am still working on me. I'm still learning every day. So Amazing. anywhere I get the opportunity to give back, like I'm mm-hmm. doing now, mm-hmm. let even if it's one person that can mm-hmm. get something from what we are doing today to encourage them, right, to yeah. tell them, keep going. You're a housewife. You are wonderful. You Amazing. are giving back. It, do you know housewife is a job? It is. Yeah. <laughs> of course it is. Homemaker is a job. It's not everybody that can do it. I'm uh-huh. sorry. Uh-huh. It is You're a right. job. A yes, job that is. you don't get salary for. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, amazing well done. I realize this is amazing and while you were talking you know I had a conversation <laughs> recently with uh, my mentor and uh, we were talking and he said something that is so profound he said you you you, you acknowledging your weakness doesn't mean you're accepting your weakness yes, yes. I acknowledge I acknowledge I am weak, but hello, I'm not accepting that I am weak. Yes. It's only to show you that I need help. Mm-hmm. That's it. I need help. So if I acknowledge something, doesn't mean I'm accepting it. So talk Diva, now, now to you with what you do within the sustainability space, because that's what you call yourself and that's what you see you. We, we see you do everywhere. You know, you're, no, it's okay for my, you're welcome. So now, with what we have today and in, in because most of your job are here in Nigeria in Africa so with what we have going on today how best can we drive this conversation you know mm-hmm. bring it up uh the, the 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 what i use the word morale of our girl the girl children not neglecting the boy children now or the boy child i beg your pardon the girl yeah. child and the boy child not neglecting them now how do we have that conversation how do we bring it up well, in terms of inclusion, yes, 
in terms of inclusion. Yes. So it actually goes back to the home. Um, so the narrative that they hear from the home is very, very important, very key. Um, a lot of us in Nigeria are religious. So, you know, the Christians, the Muslims, yeah, we are really mm -hmm. religious. And a lot of children actually learn from those religious places. And so it's very, very important that we align ourselves to the word of God, not mm -hmm. necessarily hearing what directly comes from the pulpit at all times. So I'm not negating mm -hmm. that. But like the Bavarian Christians, we need to go back and sense check what we're hearing from the pulpit. And so if anything has been said on the pulpit that does not align mm -hmm. with family, that does not align with inclusion or that causes division in the home, you should be able yeah. to sit down and say, I know you heard that, but that's mm -hmm. not really right. This is what is right. You know, yeah. so... So whilst there's the oh, Christ yeah. element, there's also the human element. And yeah. it doesn't necessarily have to be the man. It doesn't really have yeah. to be the woman. It has yeah. to be the person that really has been ordained to pass that message on. So sometimes you can be in a home. There's the father there and the mother there. But the father yeah. is gracious and graceful enough to identify that that anointing actually really sits heavily on the wife yeah. rather than him. And it doesn't yeah. mind taking... Not a step back, but a step to the side to enable mm -hmm. the woman what it is that she needs to do to yeah. make sure that her home stays as it should stay, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. little things like washing plates. Don't say uh, it's a woman's job. So all the girls in the mm -hmm. house need to go up in the kitchen and start washing from morning to night. And then mm -hmm. the guys are watching football or, or PlayStation. Already you are creating that gap. Yeah. And so when that young man grows up, gets married, the same thing happens. So he sits there, he's watching his PlayStation or playing with his mates or watching football while the mm. wife is in the kitchen. I don't want to say slaving away because <laughs> if Omar, no, it's true. If Omar would love to be there, she would love to cook up a hot meal for the kids because that's her makeup. She loves it. So she's not slaving away. She loves what she's doing. She's giving to her family at this yeah. time. When her yeah. kids reach particular age her focus might change do you see what i'm saying and she might say mm. oh, the kids now it's me time but what she has deposited in those kids is enough for them to see them through when they reach particular ages okay. teenage age you know when they're in their 20s 30s it molds their relationships so for True. me that inclusivity starts from from home mm. you know it from the home and then it doesn't end there so even when our kids hit 50 60 mm. whatever mm. still be our kids to us no matter how you swing it and the yeah. onus is on us even when they're in their different homes when you see something that is not right do not be afraid to correct it in love yeah. so you're not i know you're married now so yeah do whatever you want no you still keep on being there till the day the law calls you back home so for mm. me that inclusion is it's 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 a whole journey and don't be afraid to call things out in in love really because no. it is yeah amazing yeah. wow guys i mean i don't know i've been having this amazing time with these wonderful women and you will agree with me our discussion is has been fruitful amazing all the nuggets they've been dropping uh you will agree with me the world is nothing without women Let's be honest with ourselves. Uh, I'm not being chauvinistic here now. And I'm, just, <laughs> I'm stating the obvious. <laughs> I'm stating the obvious. So go ahead and celebrate women this season. Your mother, your grandmother, for those of us who still have them around, your great-grandmother, your sister, no. your friend uh, in class, in the office. Get them something. Get them a gift. Buy them. Let, 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 me, tell, let me tell us something that happened I, I want to I want to confess this now. Yes, on my show. So the other day, my wife just told me she 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 wants chocolate. She just said <laughs> it. Like, I, I she just feel like eating chocolate. And I said, okay, fine. I, I heard you. So some days later, on my way back from the office, I forgot completely. Forgot completely. So I got to a particular junction in Abuja, 
and just a few meters away from the house. And I was like, ah, I forgot. So I now looked for uh, a store just close by and uh, just drove in there. And I got into the shop and surprisingly, the kind of chocolate they have there, in me, I knew they, this is not the kind of chocolate she would, <laughs> she would like. But I said, no, I still need to get the chocolate. So I went and bought one roadside chocolate <laughs> and I brought it home and I looked for a big trouble because she looked at it and was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? She was really offended. I was like, I'm sorry. You know, this, 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 that. So today, before coming on the show, I actually drove into a shop and I went to buy her kind of chocolate. What do they call it? Is it Toblerone or something? something okay, like yes, 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 yes. So I went, I bought Toblerone, I bought Lind and all that, and I brought it home. You know, mm-hmm. the truth is, and I said to myself, come on, for all intents and purposes, come on, she, she's doing so much. Chocolate is not too much for you to ask. I mean, for her to ask. You know, and so guys, go out there, do something for them this season. You know, do something for them, something good. You can get them a, a flower for those of us who like that. I don't know Nigerian women. Nigerian women. <laughs> flower. Hey, whoa, flower. <laughs> let, flower. No, no, let me I understand. Let me call it the way we call it here. Flower. Exactly. So go ahead, buy them something. For those who like them, love flowers, chocolate, you know, do it. Celebrate them. This is in really celebrate them, you know. And uh, you would see what would happen because what comes around goes around. I wish I could keep them here. I wish I could keep them here, but I need to let them go also, you know, to catch up with (laughs) other activities. But before I let them go, I'm going to take one word from each of them, beginning with Lanre. I said, Lanre. Yeah. What do I want to say? I want to say, keep celebrating women celebrate men we celebrate you men as well because mm-hmm. together we make we multiply and when god said in, in genesis he said what i've created is good good so let them be blessed and be fruitful so i would Amen. say let's continue to be blessed and be fruitful as women in jesus name amen, amen. talks last word from you Last word from me would be, women, keep on celebrating yourselves because you're worth it. Amen. Keep celebrating yourself. You for Oma? Okay, I would like to say that um, is it possible for someone to fight themselves? Is it possible mm. for you to hate yourself? Is it mm. possible for you to, you know? So when we do things to each other, whether the male to the female or the female to the male, it just it, it just comes to that point where you, it's like you are fighting yourself and there is mm. no need. We are mm. all included. Table is very large. The sky is very large. Whether you are female or male, we are here to help each other. Talks has mm. really been supports too to me let me say it before we end the show she has been on my podcast <laughs> eh? yes. so so we, we, we can't do without each other you it's know true. we are always true. we are always there's there's a flavor that women bring and please mm. let's keep celebrating ourselves empowering ourselves no matter how small never look down on what you do what Larry mm. said about signing a card, it might look small, it might look insignificant, but she has sown a seed. And you'll be mm. surprised that that seed she has sown, generations after her will, will continue with that culture, you know. Mm. So please, be be assured that you are included, inspire that inclusion by empowering mm. one another. And, um, and just love yourself. Thank you. <laughs> love yourselves. I mean, you will agree with me. One thing I've heard from the three of them is love yourself. Mm -hmm. Love yourself. As in, you cannot give what you don't have. So you need to grow yourself also to that point that, yes, you'll be at that, should I say, pedestal to also dish out from 
what you have been given. I want to say a very big thank you to all of you for honoring this invitation and to, I mean, to share this space with me and to celebrate you women and others out there in the world. It's our sincere desire within the World Cafe podcast that women will indeed discover themselves and be who God has created them to be so that the world indeed will be that beautiful place that we all desire. Well, guys, you know how we do it on the show. I wish I can keep them, but I can <laughs> because they need to. They need to go out there and give more to their world yeah. and all that. I want to say a very big thank you, very big thank you. And you know how we say it on the show. Yes, this is the space where we come in to lean on what others experience to forge a positive path. Till I come your way again. Bye for now, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome time it has been with you on the World Cafe podcast today. Thank you for being there. You can catch me up on my social media handles, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram, all at Amakri Isoboye. Also, you can get copies of my books, A Cocktail of Words, The Color of Words, my HRO Notebook, and Hawkers Focus on God on Amazon and Rovin Heights online bookstores. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel at the same address at Amakri Isoe. I love to hear from you and how this podcast has impacted you. You can leave me a message at my email address amakri garibaldi at gmail.com. That is A M A C H R O E E E G A R I B A L D I. Yes, till I come your way again. Bye for now.